This is the Brain Chip Podcast. Hear from our thought leaders about neuromorphic computing, beneficial AI, and how Brain Chip's Akita is pushing AI to the edge. This podcast is a place for investors, practitioners, and anyone interested in the future of AI. Hi, all. I'm Rob Telson, Vice President of Ecosystem and Partnerships at Brainchip. Welcome and thank you for joining our latest episode of our Brainchip podcast series. These events are structured to provide current and future investors and those interested in AI and the Brainchip technology a path to better understand who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. If you have not listened to any of our podcasts, please go to our website at www.brainship.com. Go to our media tab where you will find our podcasts. You can also listen to any of these podcasts on your favorite podcast platform, or please go to our YouTube channel at Brainship Inc. and find all of our podcasts and additional media. Today, we have the pleasure of spending some time with Kevin Ryan. Kevin is the Senior Director of the IoT Business Unit at ARM. His focus is on the ecosystem and go-to-market development. With a deep understanding of technology and the emphasis on the power of the partnerships, which are essential to developing complete solutions, making sure his customers and their customers are successful. The power of the ecosystem, it translates into real-world benefits for users of the ARM technology and its partners. Kevin. Welcome to the BrainChip Podcast. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I got to tell you, it's really great to have you with us today, Kevin. For our listeners, I've been working closely with the ARM ecosystem team for a while now. ARM is a company that truly understands and values the ecosystem mindset. This is a company whose success and market dominance is based on making sure their customers and their customers' customer are technology enabled. There's an old saying that it takes a village. Being a part of the ARM ecosystem is something that Brainchip is extremely excited about, working closely with ARM and building out our partnership with the common goal to drive technology adoption and enablement so our current and future mutual customers are successful. What excites me about today's conversation is having the opportunity to understand a bit more how ARM approaches their ecosystem. Most importantly, for all of us listening to this podcast to truly understand what ecosystem means, how ARM drives this forward from an industry leader's view, and how some of this will translate into Brainchip's journey. Kevin, why don't you take a moment and provide our listeners with a bit of background on yourself? Great. Thanks, Rob. And as Rob mentioned, I'm Kevin Ryan, and I lead our IoT go-to-market and ecosystem team here at ARM. Um, you know, as you know, the IoT industry is an incredibly diverse set of use cases, developers, and partners that create these solutions for end customers. To give you some perspective on the size and scope of that market, the ARM ecosystem has shipped over 230 billion chips to date and have over a thousand technology partners in that ecosystem. A lot of those chips and ecosystem partners are focused on the IoT space. The amount of chips in our ecosystem that shipping is growing quickly as well. Last quarter alone, we reported our ecosystem shipped over 7.4 billion chips across the various markets. That's a lot of chips in a single quarter. Um, so, Along with our developer communities and ecosystem partners, we are fortunate to be at the center of this large, growing, and diverse IoT market. Yeah, you know, um, that is an amazing breadth that the IoT market covers. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about volume, uh, as Kevin mentioned, 230 billion chips and over a thousand technology partners in their ecosystem. You know, this is, is, is those are staggering numbers. And as Kevin also mentioned, um, 7.4 billion chips last quarter with ARM devices. Uh, take a moment as a listener and try to process that. And it doesn't come overnight when they build this out. This is something that's built over time. And so Kevin, you know, what is ARM doing 
to address this large and diverse market? Yeah, you know, from, from an IoT perspective, there are a few things we are focusing on with our ecosystem to reduce the friction across the developer and technology ecosystem. We call this initiative IoT Total Solutions. And basically, our IoT Total Solutions are built around three main pillars. That first pillar is what we call ARM Corestone, which is basically pre-integrated designs that our partners that are building silicon can take and use in their entirety or take pieces of the Corestone design and modify to meet their specific market requirements. Either way, the intent is to lower the time, cost, and friction in developing IoT devices based on ARM IP. The, the second element, of IoT Total Solutions is what we call ARM Virtual Hardware. ARM Virtual Hardware is software models, usually in the cloud, that enable software developers to build, run, and test their code without the need for physical hardware. We, we have enabled models including M-Class all the way from M0 to the latest M85, A-Class devices targeting the IoT, and the core stone models I've talked about, you know, in previously. The other thing we're enabling as well is full board level models within ARM virtual hardware. So we have like uh, Raspberry Pi, NXP, ST Micro, and more on the way where we provide full board level models for developers to develop their software on. The third element uh, of ARM Total Solutions is around standards. Basically what we're doing is working with the ecosystem in taking common non-differentiating differentiating elements of the device and making them standard. So the ecosystem is not spending time and money on the things that should be common across devices. Um, the other benefit to the standardization is it greatly increases uh, the productivity and eases the lives of the software development community. For a class, or Linux-based devices, we call this initiative Project Cassini. And for M-Class devices, we call it Project Centauri. Wow. Those are three, three key points that Kevin just brought up. Uh, you know, talking about Corestone, really what ARM's doing for our listeners for, to understand these three items, it, it's, it's really about these pre-integrated de integrated de designs. And, and it's, it, really simplifies the design process and gets products to market. So our current mutual customers and our future mutual customers can move at a very efficient pace to get products to market. And software models, the second thing he brought up and, and modeling itself, making sure that everything is functional. This is one of the challenges with the ecosystem is bringing everything together. And ARM has done a really good job with that. And the board level models to make sure from the device standpoint itself, it's functioning. And, and lastly, uh, standards within the ecosystem, uh, critical, critical again, because what we want um, as part of this ecosystem is to make sure our customers have this ease of use. Um, they can get their products validated from all different levels and they can get their product to market efficiently in a timely fashion. So. You know, this is all really interesting, and it, I can see how these efforts uh, can reduce the friction within the ecosystem. But let's take a moment. You know, ARM's virtual hardware is particularly exciting. Uh, can you tell us a bit more on how developers are using the virtual hardware? Yeah, you know, uh, ARM virtual hardware is pretty new as well. We, we announced it last October. And the response has been amazing. Uh, you know, we knew going in, it solved a real problem or, or point of friction in the uh, developer ecosystem. Um, uh, but the feedback has really proven that out since we announced it in October. So along with in the developers engaging, which is, which is awesome, the ecosystem has embraced it as well and has built out a set of products and solutions around ARM virtual hardware. For example, we have silicon partners making their own boards available as virtual models, as we mentioned earlier. We have cloud service providers like Amazon and Oracle adding ARM virtual hardware to various cloud services they offer. And we have software tools partners like GitHub and GitLab 
et cetera, integrating ARM virtual hardware into their development tool flows. And we also have ML partners like Kikso and Noda building it into their developer services. So there's a whole ecosystem coming together uh, to enable software developers with ARM virtual hardware. Yeah, this is fantastic. And, and a couple of things that, that Kevin brought up there, um, something we don't really talk about a lot on our, our podcast, but uh, are is a critical path to, again, products being successful. You know, Kevin brought up tool partners, software partners, cloud service partners, CSPs, uh, all tied together with ML um, for this, you know, uh, the, the ARM virtual hardware environment. Uh, there's a lot going on here and a lot that needs to be um, in line and working step-by-step uh, step together uh, for all of us to be successful at, at what we're doing. Um, let's talk about the the AI ecosystem. And, and what ARM has done is they've developed a partner ecosystem to drive the proliferation of technologies such as AI uh, with the use of the ARM technology. And that's... Uh, that's why it's important to have partners such as Brainchip in this program. And how do you envision this partnership evolving? Yeah, no, good, good question. Um, you know, from an IoT perspective, you know, we view AI ML as an important element of most modern IoT developments and use cases, right? So it's becoming a very standard element of, of, of IoT. Um, as this rapid evolution of IoT to include ML, we want to work together with the ML ecosystem and with partners such as Brainship to address the use cases they are addressing. So partners like Brainship and your specific approach uh, to neuromorphic AI helps the ARM ecosystem solve some very specific use cases we are seeing in the IoT market. The, the combination of the ARM IP from A-class, M-class, and accelerators like Ethos combined with the over 100 AI ML ecosystem partners like Brainchip in the program gives the ARM ecosystem the ability to scale and solve IoT ML use cases very effectively. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so from Brainchip's perspective, uh, we want everyone to go to leverage the ARM ecosystem and to look at Brainchip to build out their next AI-enabled ARM-based product. But just as importantly, it's use the ecosystem that they've developed to learn about Brainship and other technology companies who have partnered with ARM. But what guidance would you give to someone looking to explore the benefits of the ARM ecosystem? Yeah, the, the, the place I would start is with our partner catalog. It's basically our B2B marketplace where you can discover companies that provide solutions you're looking for. So we wanna facilitate the ability for our ecosystem partners to find each other quickly so they can start working on solutions they can go to market with together. Many of our current partners have discovered each other this way by, by leveraging the partner catalog. The other thing I would, I would recommend um, to learn about our partners and our partner program is by attending our tech talks, which are a great way in about 30 minutes to get a deeper dive into the technologies being offered. We have, we've made it easy for the ecosystem to interact with each other, and I would encourage partners to reach out directly or ask ARM for an introduction. We're happy to facilitate that as well. Yeah, that's the, the great thing about the ecosystem and the partner catalog uh, is that um, they're combining all the collateral and making it very easy for um, customers to come to a, a, a central spot to take a look at the different technology offerings um, and, and determine the best way for them to build out their product and their future products. Uh, the, the tech talks, uh, which Brainship will be doing in the near future, are as another avenue um, to really understand and get educated on certain technologies, the, especially in, in our case with technology, uh, leading technology drivers like neuromorphic computing and some of the advancements we're doing uh, at, at the, the AI accelerator space. And, and lastly, um, the great thing about the ecosystem is that those can reach out to ARM directly and ARM will point them and um, educate them on how to, to leverage the catalog, look for particular technologies, which will be beneficial. So, you know, 
Kevin, I have to say, this has been a good talk. Uh, uh, it, it is meant to really give our listeners an understanding of the power of the ecosystem um, and for them to, to, to see uh, and experience the brain chip journey as we start this partnership with ARM and watch it evolve uh, moving forward. Uh, but let's talk about something fun. So I hear you're a big sports fan. Uh, I usually go with the superhero concept, but today we're talking sports. So who's your favorite sports team and why? So I uh, uh, grew up in the Bay Area um, here in California, Northern California. So a lifelong Giants fan. So uh, Giants are definitely my favorite baseball team. And uh, embarrassingly, I can probably tell you the starting lineups from teams all the way back to uh, the the early 80s. So, uh, so sometimes I forget things, but I can probably tell you every every position player for the Giants since the 80s. Well, you know, that that's that's great to hear. And um, just to just to add a little fun to that, Kevin, you know, I grew up an Angels fan. Ah. And so. uh I I one up you and the fact that the Angels' only World Series um, appearance and uh, their their victory in 2002, I believe it was, over the Giants, was uh, as an Angels fan one of the greatest moments in Angels history. Um, and uh, luckily for me, I was able to go to a couple of those games uh, and see a guy named Barry Bonds hit a home <laughs> run that just. Uh, felt like it flew for miles and miles and miles. So yeah, I, I I think recently the three World Series in five years made up for that, but that that was a hard one to take. <laughs> yeah. So I, I besides that, I couldn't tell you a lot about the Giants except for they have a really cool baseball stadium. It's 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 a fun place to be. But uh, uh, yeah, for, you know, this is a great conversation, and um, I, I appreciate you taking the time. So thank you. Kevin, for your insight and feedback today. It's truly appreciated. You know, on behalf of the BrainChip team, we want to thank all of our listeners, investors, analysts, employees, and everyone interested in learning more about AI and learning about BrainChip. We truly appreciate all of your passion and support. Our podcast series will continue. Until our next podcast, we wish everyone to stay healthy, happy, and most importantly, stay out of trouble. Thanks for listening to the Brain Chip Podcast. Please remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.